So this video is a second part to our initial video from a few weeks ago that covered the new release of Alter Inspire 2025. There are just so many cool enhancements with the new release that we thought it was worth creating a second video just to make sure we cover some of the things we might have missed. So let's start with an addition to the rib tool. Now for a while Inspire has had the ability to quickly create a rib in geometry for a while. But what's new in the new version is that the advanced options gives you the ability to select the manufacturing method. Now once you select your method, it will apply a set of fillets to the rib based on industry standards. The fillets can be adjusted if necessary as well. And this just makes that geometry creation process a little bit easier with every little step. The next thing I want to show you is we now have the ability to restrict motion of a joint by using joint limits. Now just like before, I can have Inspire auto select all of my joints. I can choose what type of joint it is. Now I have this little limits checkbox that gives me two different directional arrows. And then these arrows can be dragged to set a limit of how far that joint can move under motion. Now while I'm here in this model, Inspire users can now create a flexible body within a rigid group when running simulations. So you can see I have a handful of rigid groups in this assembly. I can now right click a part in my assembly and select flexible for motion. Now you'll see once I do this, it will change that part to a blue color just to separate a little bit from the rigid parts. Now I can come up here to the flex body simulation and you can see it's going to give me an alert that shows that I'm creating a flexible body from a rigid group and then I can run the analysis. Then you can see I have the different visualization options that I would with a normal threshold simulation. Now another thing I want to show you is with CFD results, I actually have the ability to control the visualizations a little bit better than I did before. I can combine different visualizations. So if I click over here on my volumetric measuring, you can see I'm going to get a little menu that gives me the option to set the mid and max on the values that I want to see in my volume. So while it's not a huge change, it does just add those little things that make the visualization and the understanding of the results a little bit easier. Okay, with implicit modeling, I now have the ability to use other shapes or parts as a boundary setting for a lattice shape that I'm creating. So you can see I have two different shapes, one that is a more organic shape and one that is a solid square. So if I come to my implicit modeling ribbon and select my lattice and select the square shape, I can start changing the parameters there. Now for this one, I'm going to create a point count that's about 7,000 just to make it a little bit cleaner to see. Once I've done that, I'm going to hit this green check here at the bottom of that and move on to find the point edge uh, set filters. Once I hit that green plus mark from here, I can choose that it'll apply to the points and I can now filter my shape by a bounding body. Once I do that, I'm going to choose that original organic shape that I started with and hit the green check. Now, once I had this part again, you can see that the lattice shape is now trimmed at that organic shape. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is how I can now create a pattern off of a conformal lattice shape. You can see I have a solid part here, but I also have created two surfaces off this part. I'm going to start by creating my lattice by choosing the original shape. Then once I do that, I have a lot of flexibility. Again, it's something I love about the lattice creation tool. I can choose the size and the shape of the lattice that I want and hit this green check mark. Once that's done, I'm going to come up here to the implicit modeling ribbon, find the pattern icon, and under this drop down menu, I'll choose create conformal. Now I'm wanting to pattern the volume of my shape, but I also want to do it along the two surfaces I've created. Now you'll see once I choose my two surfaces, Inspire now goes through and creates this grid so you can see the parameters that my pattern will be based on. And this is new to 2025 and it just makes it really easy for me to visualize how this is going to work. And once I hit that green check, the next step is for me to select the part that I want patterned. And in this case, I want the main lattice to be patterned. So let me hide these surfaces really quick and now I can show you how I can create a pattern off of this lattice. And again, this is based on the surfaces that I created in the last step. I can go through and I can choose how many of each pattern I want created and in what direction they're patterned in. 
And I can also modify the spacing in between each pattern as well. And again, just for creating geometry, this becomes a really powerful, simple to use tool. So hopefully you can see all these new features and how powerful Alter Inspire is getting. If you have any other questions or want to talk about it further, go to www.trueinsight.io. Thank you.